feast films are a reaction to other horror movies out there. Every five, ten years, um, a new trend, a new slate of horror films comes out to sort of define what is scary. And the fun uh, about thinking in a feast world is the sarcastic voice gets to come in and say, like, well, how would that really go down? You know, <laughs> would, you really, uh, would you really save that person? Or would you cover your hide and run like hell? The whole vibe was Kill Bill meets Gilligan Island. Right in the kisser. <laughs> That's John. John is a, a highly respected actor director that all of a sudden makes fun of a genre that the most sophisticated artists will not even touch. Oh, you know, and they said, well, maybe we could do a sequel to Feast. I'm like, well, you know, I, I called Marcus and I went, midgets and catapults. <laughs> and naked, tattooed chicks. We ended up starting on Halloween. Uh, Halloween was our first shooting day. And, uh, you know, I mean, how awesome is that? This movie started with a, a super-sized small person copulating with an over-breasted blonde in a trailer. My towel is absolutely stuck to me. I got stuck. Well, you know, monsters are gonna fuck you up. They don't fuck you up one way, they're gonna fuck you up another way. Um, I play the role of Greg Swank. And I did a lot of research uh, for this role by subscribing to Swank Magazine. And you know, by I'd say like the 12th issue, I got him. When I first saw Feast One, I thought that it was um, probably one of the most innovative, uh, campy, comedy-like horror films I'd ever seen. We all have our, our character pages for Feast up. And as soon as I put it up, I mean, that's the number one thing everybody said. I, it was the only time I had to censor comments from people because I would get either A or B, and it was mostly B. It was mostly dudes in Atlanta or who knows, Minnesota somewhere, Wyoming, saying, you effing bitch. <laughs> I hope they make a feast too and they rip your effing vagina out and throw it to the monsters. It's going to be cold day in hell before these films are duplicated in American film because there are moments in the films at this time that are extremely cruel and at the same time extremely humorous. And this is, of course, in the nature of the man-animal. When we entertain, this is what we do. <coughs> Shreveport has become this huge movie town, uh, I guess because a lot of people had to come up after Katrina from uh, New Orleans, and, and it's just it's, and it's a pretty pretty good town for making movies. It's got a lot of stuff all over the place. Uh, people are still excited about making movies. And we, we drove around for a few days, and we found this little town called Plain Dealing. And I thought, well, this looks pretty good. It's just, it's just, it's just out of another era. It's just like the town that time forgot. Uh, at least this little section of it. 
and it's and it's uh, it's pretty neat looking. It's like the last picture show or something. I just want to give you guys a heads up. This is a small little town. They don't care about celebrity. They don't care about money. They don't care about anything other than this is their little town and we're intruding on it. So I just encourage everybody to be very diplomatic and uh, sweet and uh, cordial to everybody that we meet out there. It's a great little town. It's perfect for our movie. So we want to celebrate the town, even though we're going to bring this insane circus there. Oh yeah, and maybe, and maybe if anyone asks you what kind of movie you're making, you say we're making a monster movie, a good old fashioned monster movie, like they used to do with a man in a rubber suit. You know, a lot of people come up and they just go like, well, you know, what are the monsters? Where are they from? And all I can say is like, is like yeah, right. Where do the monsters come from? It's just so obvious. The monsters come from up Marcus and Patrick's ass. <laughs> Dude, you can't take your eyes off it. Just kind of right there, right there. They come from your mind, and uh, that's why they're so frightening. People pay to see the sexy, and all I can do is bring it. Monster movies have gone to so many different places over the years, um, but there was one area that I think had yet to maybe be explored, and perhaps these movies reveal why. <laughs> but that last taboo of a creature seeing in all of its natural glory. <laughs> where do I, where do I, I don't know where you took it in, <laughs> That means exploring all of its bodily functions, all of its desires. Maybe we could milk some horror out of that, literally and figuratively. Pointy. <laughs> don't touch the dick. On the first film, you get one glimpse of uh, their genitalia, and you know, it, it's out there, it's pretty big. Well, this time John wanted to go a little more so. So they had the same uh, phallus, but the sack was much bigger. I mean, this time the beans were equal to the frank. Uh, the, uh, the monster junk. Uh, in Feast One, you know, we, we closed one in the door and we didn't really show anything much except, you know, Bartender, you know, screams, Monster Cock stuck in the door, so everybody knew what it was. And, and I figured, well, you know, on Feast 2, uh, people are going to be looking for it now. Uh, it's not going to be anywhere, like a surprise. Uh, so every now and then we have the monster junk hanging out. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like it really does much until the autopsy. We jump the shark? Do we need the penis to move a second? Like a twitch? Is there any, any way we could get a little more spunk on him? Harley, Mom, she tried to have a home life, and uh, it didn't necessarily work out that well. Biker Queen never tried. Okay, so, you know, so, so you know, Diane, uh, you know, didn't know how to ride a motorcycle. So she went over to Harley Davidson and they, uh, they put her through the course and everything. She learned how to ride a motorcycle and, and, and she took gun training. She'd never shot a gun before. John explained to me that I was kind of going to be this like crass, badass, tattooed girl. Want to know how you kill a girl monster? Yeah. You know, it's funny to me because, you know, as much as I do have that side of me, I, I don't realize until I look in the mirror how covered with tattoos I am. I'm amazed 
when I go to audition, casting directors that, that I don't know very well always ask me about John Gulliger. He's a pretty kooky fellow, isn't he? And, and my reaction is always the same. It's like, he's really not. This guy is a genius. And anybody who doesn't think so can suck it. Uh, when, we, when we made the first feast, we were shooting and stuff like this. I, I mean, I think in the back of our minds, you know, we thought, well, it could be the beginning of a franchise type thing. But I think in other people's minds, I think the, the last thing anyone ever thought was that there was going to be another feast, <laughs> let alone two. So, uh, uh, so we we're kind of glad. I think that the Feast films do have a chance of getting a rating. I don't know that they've invented it yet, but there has to be some letter or numeral that can hint at what is to come when the lights go down and the red starts to spray. <laughs> I think this one, they allowed us to just go for it. It's Dimension Extreme, and we get to really just play. Okay, Absolutely none. But there's a madness. I mean, there's a, a genius to the chaos. Or as John Gulliger said in his uh, his green light bio.